we What'd beat you say? New Greenwich. That's what it's called. Greenwich? This is Maui Wowie. Uh, so <laughs> it's <laughs> My favorite on. movie is that I can't decide on a favorite movie. Press <laughs> next podcast. Hey yo, I'm Katie. And it's your co-host Corey. And this is the Press Next Podcast. EMP. Hold it down. It's Lil Perry. Lil Perry Perry. He, uh, he about to be the star of two shows. You know no. what I'm saying? No? You don't want to be the... As long as he sits down, he was hitting the mic with his toe. Oh, was he? I'm sorry. He needs a haircut. He do need a haircut. Look at him. He need a spooky, spooky haircut. He does. <laughs> Little mop boy. Anyway, uh, welcome to Press Next. We are a weekly film entertainment podcast dedicated to giving you a fix in a way that sounds like you are just sitting on your couch, sitting around talking about shows and movies with your best friends. So not only discussing why we love films, but how they apply in our real lives and or, uh, you know, I'm like the, I like to go deep dive into everything, like every camera movement means something and katie's yeah. like uh i just was just watching it just to watch it yeah pure so. entertainment <laughs> pure entertainment you feel me so you can either watch the shows that we review or watch the movies that we review or you don't have to because sometimes you know we talk about it without spoiling it most times we spoil it that was crazy wasn't it we spoiler alert though spoiler alert spoiler alert this mug is moving it is moving oh you're crazy. good now don't Move. Don't move. A muscle. All Shh. right. <laughs> anyway, um, you had a good week? I did. I feel like I did, too. Yeah? Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I enjoyed it. What was good about your week? I feel like I just had time to, like, I had, well, I didn't have a lot of time. But I did have one day. Sunday, I felt like it's the first day I had back in, uh, like, a month. That's true. So... I was lit. I, t- I told Katie, I said, I'm going to sit here and just it just rock. I don't want to change. I don't shorts. That that basically, this is too much too much information. I ain't had no underwear on. I just had on these shorts and no shirt, no socks, no nothing. All day yesterday. Yeah. It was the greatest day ever. It was cool. I got to take a nap, watch a movie, play video games, scratch my stomach and figure out what I'm doing next. <laughs> it was a good day. Good week. What about you? Um, what was good this week? I just feel like I really prioritize like walking, getting steps in. Um, and that just makes me feel so much better mentally. And yeah, so I feel like that part and then just sticking to my routine felt really good. Um, yeah. I also got to... To symbol you a lot, so that was fun. A chill, a chill weekend. <laughs> I can't, I'm trying to think of what I even did this weekend. And we went to Fuzzies. Oh, yes, we went to Fuzzies. And then I went out Saturday, so. Oh, you did? Yesterday was a good. Uh, and I'm a ride. Recoup Like day. a rodeo. Uh, you looking good, so I ain't gonna lie. Now, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Anyway. Today we are going to be reviewing the movie uh, The Whale. It's 2022. So if you have seen that movie, we're going to be talking about that. If you haven't seen that movie, we're going to be talking about that. Um, And all the ins and outs. But as we normally do, we're going to start talking about what's going on in the film industry. What's out now. uh, Also, what is coming out. Um, But I like to start with what's been on your screen. So what have you been watching this past week? Yeah, so this past week I really didn't do too much watching, but um, Friday night I watched the new, what is it called? The Lacey Peterson. Oh, yes. Okay. I definitely, so I saw it, I guess maybe I was, I was out somewhere maybe at work. I saw it pop up on Netflix. I said to myself, self, (laughs) this is something, oh, I want to watch this. And I said, oh, this is probably something Katie wants to watch too. Let me wait till I get home, and then we can watch it together. I come into the kitchen. I hear something that, like, you know, all the true crime documentaries sound the same. Sound the same, yeah. They sound the same. So I was like, I know good and damn well you ain't watching this Lacey. Okay, well, it never even crossed my mind that, like... I would want to watch it? No, because you're, you're not really, like, a true crime person. Yes, I am. I enjoy it. What do you mean? I like Crime Junkie. That's true, but not a 
Not as of late. I like crime uh, 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 documentaries. I just, the thing is, I would have watched it, but I also know that you watched it, so I was like, I'm going to watch it with you. Because I, okay, I was finna start it off. I'm sorry. I should have. Okay, but it was the American American Murder, Lacey Peterson, but American Murder is also the documentary they did over Chris Watts. Yeah, so it's like a series, like a thing. Yeah. It's kind of like the OJ uh, Yes, thing, exactly. Uh, so I American stories or whatever right right and i think they re- did a really good job um and then i've also so i book club movie club yes read a book called um good girls guide to murder and it that's is a show isn't it a show on netflix okay, now yeah i was gonna watch that too were you yeah we can watch it together because i started it and mm. i no no, no. Y'all, y'all y'all seen a thing i got like 15 minutes in and i got distracted and it was just one of those like you got to pay attention adhd moments where i didn't know if i wanted to watch something or if i wanted to read or if i wanted to scroll and so i just never made a decision mm. <laughs> well i'll watch that with you for sure and then okay. i'll go watch the lacey peterson thing uh, i haven't watched that but what is on my screen right now i think i wrote it down oh I wa- we watched tarot mm. Yes, I took a nap, but yes, yeah, we watched Tarot. Yeah. And that'll let you know how that was. She took a nap. <laughs> um, I've been on Wayne's Bros again simply because I was trying to find a scene, a very specific scene, and now I have to watch the whole show until I find the scene. Oh, my god! And usually I know exactly no, where the scene is. you do. So I'm, that's why it's pissing me off. Because like I knew what a poem scene was that I sent you mm-hmm. yesterday. It, it's literally it has to be the first season because it was Pop's old diner because the new diner came in sec- season two so it has to be the first season okay but it's literally like a they did like cold openings mm-hmm. so it's right after a cold opening it's either the cold opening or it's right after the cold opening where Pop's is somebody is at their register checking out and they paid him in pennies <laughs> And I just <laughs> no. He's counting the pennies. <laughs> this isn't that funny, but it is to me. Uh, he's counting the pennies, and the way he counts the pennies, he's bad at the customer. Customer, uh, like he says, like he's counting five hundred thirty-two, five hundred thirty-three, five hundred thirty-four, five hundred damn thirty-five. Like he's like he's just bad, and I'm like I. That scene is going to bring me joy as you just saw me giggling. Yeah. I can't find it. So I've stuck on Wayne's Bros right now because I got to find this scene. Well, if anybody knows what episode that scene's on, let us know. I'm going to be honest with you. By the time y'all see this, I will probably have That's found true. it. That's let's, true. Let's keep it a down well. Okay. Good question. If somebody were to pay you in all pennies and say it was like $5, would you sit there and count out all of that? Or would you just like trust them? I know. You're, because- I'm counting it because I, you could be shortchanging me. And first off, you have now granted it's legal tender. I was about to say it's money. It's legal tender, whatever. Annoying, but it's money. It is, but also, come on, fam, it's twenty twenty four. So if you're gonna do that to me, there's probably some intention there, and not great intentions. So I'm gonna be petty, and I'm gonna count out every single penny. And I actually hope that I get to like two dollars and thirty seven cents and then mess up, so I have to go back to count it again. Oh my gosh. Kind of like one of them things. You know what I'm saying? Because why would you do that? It's so ridiculous. Just go get an exchange or something like that. Have the bank counter. They got a little quick little... That's man. true. Yeah. Like, it is what it is. But anyway. That's true. That's what I've been watching. Tarot, Wayne's Bros, and um, are there cut scenes in NCAA? If there are, I've been watching that. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, The Whale, because we watched The Whale. And yeah. I feel like maybe we watched something else, too, but I'm, I might just be tripping. Yeah, I don't think so. Not this um, week. Okay, so what's going on in the, the film industry? As of, like we talked about la- last week, Blake Lively still has her feet to the fire. Yeah. They still on her head top. Matter of fact, every day I feel like is something new coming out about Blake Lively. Yeah, well, of course. That's how the media happens. One thing happens and then everybody they, pulls yeah. up everything. They so. dig up every old thing people yeah. on set talking about. There was a movie in like 2012 that apparently. Of the um, bump thing? The bump. Oh, no, never mind. Oh, hold on now. Like a bump bump? Like bump bump bump? Like B2K? Like. No, like a baby bump. A b- oh, like she was pregnant? Yeah, have you seen that interview? N- no, tell me. So they were, it was her and Parker Posey, and they were in an interview for a Woody Allen film. I can't remember what it was, 
But the interviewer, and at this point, Blake had already announced to the world that she was pregnant. And so the interviewer was like, oh, my gosh, congratulations on your little bump. And Blake looked at the interviewer and was like, congratulations on your bump. <laughs> and it was just like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's tough. That might be that one was That one was actually crazy. Like, all of this other stuff I'm seeing, I'm like, okay, say what you want, whatever. I, I don't have a side in this. But uh, uh, Bear said he wanted to talk. He got something to say. He got Did something to say. Did y'all hear that? Perry just huffed into the mic. He said. He said, stop talking about Blake. He said, I have a side to take. Yeah, hold on. Um. Anyway, I just think that like, and I was listening to The Toast, the podcast that I like to listen to every day, and they made a good point. They were like, y'all have got to stop acting like these actresses and actors or just are like the pinnacle just of normal good humans. Well, or just normal people. Like, think about the theater kids that you went to school with. Hey, hey now. You're riding the, the thin line. You're talking to one, but go ahead. I was about to say, you're a theater kid, but like those people grew up and became actors and actresses. And it's like. But I mean, I'm a th- I'm weird. I understand that. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying what I'm saying is like the the way that they talk with each other and the sarcasm that they use. Like everything's I, I don't, everything's drama. I don't think that right. Right. I don't think that most people understand it. So for sure. Like I like to live my life in a sitcom. Exactly. Right. And you be like, oh, this and is it, real life. And it doesn't translate well. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I understand that for sure. Uh, no, I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about something else that happened in 2012 or I guess around that time. She was on a set of another movie and allegedly or, or apparently, um, there was so much turmoil with her on a set that the director was like, I will not be doing this movie if she's there. So they removed her and got somebody else. Oh my. Um, but I now say that to say, tea. I don't know. I'm going to just keep it at that. Wow. I don't really know Blake Lively like that. Yeah. Obviously. Cause she's famous. I don't know her, know her, but I'm like, I'm not even that deep into her movies and films because I just, she's never really been. Now I will say this. First off, shout out to Chaperone. Chaperone says she would never be in a movie because she thinks the actors are weird. But anyway, <laughs> uh, um, damn, what I was about to say because I think, oh no, now that was going in on how she's a nepo baby. Mm. I didn't know she had an older sister who apparently was in everything. I don't, I don't know that either. Look it up. It was her older sister. Because I seen a photo of her on TikTok. Her older sister. Let's let's Google it real quick. Blake. Lively, my sister said Blake Roller. Robin Lively. Yes. So they are trying to claim that she's like the classic nepo baby, and the reason why people don't think that she is a good actress is because all the roles she's playing is basically who she is. What is Robin Lively in? The Karate Kid. She's apparently in all of them. Yeah, Twin look. Peaks. Yeah, I've see, been saying that we need it, to yeah. watch Twin Peaks. She's 52. A lot of the karate kids. Yeah, she, I feel like she's in like all of them. Okay, well. I mean, I don't know. Look, maybe back in the day, that name got her somewhere, but I ain't never heard of Robin Lively. Me either, but either way... But I think it was like her dad, her sister, and her mom were all in the industry. Okay. Either way, that's what's been going on this week. Blake Lively, they they still on her neck. Um, Millie Bobby Brown is going to adapt her novel, uh, which is called 19 Steps, into a Netflix film or a series. It's film or series one or two. You're like, you didn't know she had a novel? No. Shout out to MBB, man. What's it about? I have no idea. Okay. You want me to click on the article and see? No, it's okay. Okay. I was like, this is probably going to be important at some point because the funny thing is, this is how I genuinely feel. You tell me if you feel different. Okay. I feel like Millie Bobby Brown is like Netflix's uh, daughter, right? Like it's like her platform. Okay. Because of Stranger Things? Yes. Because of the take. success of Stranger Things, Netflix really became what it is right now. And so she can have whatever she wants on that platform. Like, I, yeah, I could see that. That's how I feel. I feel like if she goes to Netflix, they're going to be like, oh. Give yeah. her what she wants. Yeah. You're our little baby girl. Like, you can have whatever you want to have because you basically like threw us into stardom. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, because why else would it go straight to Netflix? Like, you're Millie Bobby Brown. Like, you, you don't think you could probably get that? 
into theaters and other places? Nah, you go to Netflix. Go, go, go. go well, I don't know. Money. I've never heard of the book, so. Go get your. Grandma told me, get your money. Blame me. But what if it's not even out yet? What if it's like one of them things the that like. Yeah. I mean, the book. Is um, it? Are you looking it up? Mm-hmm. It came out in September of last year. She's a co-author. Oh. But novel by Kathleen McGurl. McGurl. McGurl and Millie Bobby Brown. Shout out to uh to MBB being an uh, uh, actress oh and an author. Oh my gosh, this what? is kind of up my alley. What's it about? Read the uh. Okay, Nineteen Steps is a book by Millie Bobby Brown that is based on her grandmother's experiences during the Bethnal Green Tube disaster. The disaster was the UK's largest civilian loss of life during World War II. This is right up your alley. The book's title refers to the steps that led into Bethnal Green Underground Station, which was used as an overnight shelter during air raids. Mm. The book has received some backlash for its quality and outsourcing. Don't know what that means. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know either, but um, that's right up your alley. I'm sure you probably need to read it. Yeah, I like historical Historical fiction, specifically like World War Two. I think that will probably translate pretty well into uh, a movie, film. Yeah, yeah so. I think so too. All right, shout out to her. Well, I'm excited for that. A two four is producing a Friday the Thirteenth series for Peacock. A series? And yes, I, I I think it's supposed to be like a prequel. Like oh. the series is a prequel, so you're really getting to understand like the origin stories of Jason. Okay. So I'm lit about it. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, like. I I'm would excited. like to see, honestly, when especially when it comes to horror, we used to, if there's one adaptation I, or a genre adaptation that you can really get in like a, a show into, it's horror. Like it made the jump from being movies to shows very well. Yeah, and I think that we really saw that with American Horror Story. Yes. And I feel like American Horror Story used to be so big and like everyone was watching it and we were all watching it the night that it dropped. And I just feel like it's lost its luster. But I think it's, I don't think it's lost its luster. I think it bec- it started a movement and now is in a, a market that's very saturated. So it's like, I don't need to go to to FX or to American Horror Story to get my, my scary fix. And the misses that you're going to have is this right here. The, the foundation of American Horror Stories is supposed to be anthology of, um, of true American horror stories, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, like Murder House, stuff like that. These are stories that, that we grew up with as being like American horror stories. Right. Now, at some point, they tried to connect them, and they did connect them. And then that's when I think it started to go off rails because now they're not, they're not standalones. It's not an anthology anymore, right? Like, you, I can't just go. It's not a Black Mirror episode. I can't just go watch season six if I want to go watch season six. If season six is connected to season three and two, true. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I think if they would have stuck still to these American stories, and not start going like even my Roanoke well, Nightmare was I think like that's tough, but why like, they came out with American stories, you know that other series, yeah, because yeah. they but there's like one episode, there's like short films, right? They could have, I think, because they recognized they made a mistake. Mm. Okay. And so they were like, all right, we can still go back to these stories, but these aren't stories that are maybe even um, that we grew up, you know what I'm saying? They're just like, they're true horror stories today. Mm -hmm. Like the ring camera one, right? Like somebody, like a home invasion. That's scary. That's a horror story if you really want to get into it. Um, But I just think the genre itself has really translated off the movie screens and into the film space, I mean, into the TV uh, space, because you can really, people like, for some reason, like they enjoy being, Spooked. Like spooked, yeah, and over you you can take the character development over time, so it's hard to d- develop a character in a horror movie, um, so quick, right? Like you, a horror movie is maybe an hour and thirty minutes, two hours, yeah. So it's really just focused on like the who the, whoever the villain is or the or the the main scary person, but in a horror show, you can figure out what the motivation is for each person as to why the horror is even taking place. Right. So I think it's really translated. I, I'm going to enjoy probably uh, the, the the series on Peacock. I think Peacock, first off, makes good shows. Yeah, I'm excited for it because Peacock, I agree, does make good shows, and A24 oh, obviously does great work. So I think that that's going to be really, really good. So I'm what, d- And do you know like when it comes out? I think they're in like production now. Okay. 
So it probably won't come out until next year, like late next year. Hopefully, like October. Yeah. Yeah, that would be fire. Yeah. That would be fire. A24. Wait, are there any months next year that have a Friday the 13th? That would be fun. I'm dropping on that. Even though I ain't going to cap, I do think Jason's a whack villain. <gasps> Wait. <clears throat> this year, Friday the 13th is the uh, December. Nah. Uh, Let's see. Sorry. You getting passed up is Christmas season. June. Nah. June of next it's year. It's too hot to be scary. <laughs> Especially in Texas. I'm sorry. It's too hot to be scary. Tears what it is. That's it? Uh, Well, sorry. I'll just say keep it around October time. You get December. I'm too. I'm too much in high joy to be scared or anything. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That's uh, fair. Anyway, that's what's going on right now in film. So let's talk about what is out now. What's in theaters? What you can go watch right now, and then also what's coming soon. Um, Alien Romulus. These are the top three in box office. So every time we get to this, I'll give you the top three that are in box office this weekend. Uh, because if I just wish to tell you everything that's out, it's like forty movies. So yeah, <laughs> not gonna do that. So Alien Romulus did very well in box office this weekend. Yeah, 42 million. Did very well. So shout out to them. They had a big weekend. Uh, Deadpool and Wolverine had a, still had a good weekend. They were number two. And then It Ends With Us was number three, which knocks Twisters off of the top three. But Twisters was in the fourth place spot. Um, so I'm probably going to go see Alien. I don't know, actually. I just, I'm so, because of what's coming up, I don't know if I want to watch Alien. Does that make sense? Really? Yes, because I told you I'm more of a predator guy, and um, I'm gonna click on these new releases, and you're gonna be like, "Oh, okay, cool." Yeah, I have no idea what's coming up. I think you do, but you haven't seen it. We gonna see. There's there's two movies in here specifically that I'm excited about. Really around this October, oh, the I, August 23rd. There's a lot of horror yes, coming out. Yes, that's about to drop. The Crow, which has Bill Skarsgård and FKA Twigs. Shout out to FKA oh, Twigs. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yep. Blink uh, Twice with Channing Tatum. The one where they in the little thing. Uh, and they're like in uh, a, like they're a on fever an dream on the island. Yeah. Blink Twice. So I want to go see that. Yeah, Strange makes sense Darling, which is like getting a re-release, I, I believe. Like it was believed, like... Released before, or like a festival. Okay. Um, but them two, because those two are coming out, the rest of them that are coming out, The Forge, Between the Temples, uh, Greedy People, Summer of Violence, them, I might have to go. These are coming up This is tomorrow. August 23rd. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, no, this Friday. Friday. Yeah, this Friday. Okay. Um, and then on August 21st, Stream, which is another horror, uh, which has Daniel Harris, Jeffrey Combs, D. Wallace, and Tony Todd. I don't really know if The Crow, like if I felt moved to watch that, but Bill Skarsgård, I'm there. I felt I felt curious enough to watch it, and yeah. then I'm definitely curious enough to watch Blink Twice. Okay, and I haven't heard of Greedy People. It's a comedy crime with Lily James and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Gordon-Levitt. I'm down with that. That's what I'm saying. It sounds like a... So with those coming up, I do up, like JGL. With those coming up, I don't know if I would like spend my duckets to go see Alien. Okay, okay, that's fair. That's why I say that. That's that's why I say that. I respect it. Um, the flop or not, or really just the flop of the week is still Borderlands. Mm. They only went from eight million to fourteen million. Remember, this is a hundred twenty <laughs> million dollar budget. This is oh. week two. They only have fourteen million. It's it's not looking good. Yeah, that's crazy. Yes, and you <laughs> know if you if you were to go to IMDb right now. And you were to search Borderlands, the first thing it says is the best selling video game. And this is, goes to our conversation that we had last week. They're just making movies off of what sells the best in other areas. Just because if it flops like this, they're gonna be like, oh, well, we thought it was gonna be good. It sold the best. Like, do you think that they could have done a show like. Um, yes. What was that? Yes, like Fallout. No, the other one. Uh, well, Fallout is is one, but you're thinking about Last of Us. Yes. Yes, they probably could have. There, because there's so much in a video game, especially a game like Borderlands. Yeah. That you have characters you really have to develop in their storylines. Okay. So, yeah, and even Fallout. Fallout was tough. Fallout was incredible. Mm-hmm. And if I played the game, and the game's incredible. 
The Last of Us, incredible. So it might be, you might be onto something. If it's a video game adaptation, you might want to just slide to the TV show. Yeah, I mean... More money. It's going. Borderlands would have cost way more than $120 million if for a TV show. But I'm sure if you would have did it right, you could have recouped it. And also, I'm just sorry. I haven't seen it, so I need to go see it to say this. But I already know how I feel about Kevin Hart. You weren't going to sell me on Kevin Hart in Borderlands. Wait, do you have beef with Kevin Hart? I don't think he's a great drama actor. I think he's okay. good comedy. Okay, wait, I will watch he was like in his, a drama role? Yeah, I don't, any of his drama or action, if it does not come with oh, comedy, gotcha. it's not good. Okay, okay. Like, I don't, sorry. I said this on uh, on uh, on Stucky. I just, I feel bad and it, it breaks my heart, no pun intended, because I really do enjoy Kevin Hart. You it breaks this. my Kevin Hart. You know this. We went to go see him live. Yeah, true. But his comedy movies, some of them will forever be goaded to me. It just, I don't think he, he has that range. Sure. Okay. That's it. That's it. All right. Uh, but I also, this may sound like me hating, but I applaud him for doing it and for trying. Right. Because a lot of people won't even try. I don't think you're hating. I think there's a lot of people that don't like Adam Sandler in drama Ooh, movies. Let me tell you something. I'm glad you brought him up because we talked about it. I don't know if you did you did you watch last episode? Mm -mm. The one that came oh. out today? No. I oh, not. snaps! Or oh, should have went out yesterday. Um, we we had a little tangent about Adam Sandler. Really? We might have to put Adam Sandler up there on one of the like Mount Rushmore's, Mount Rushmore's of this film industry. He one of them ones. Yeah. And people feel a way about him in the dramas. Sure. But I know. I like I don't him. either. I think he's great. Click, fantastic. Cop the cobbler, fantastic. The cobbler was really good. Uncut gems, fantastic. Fifty first dates. We didn't even bring that up. Uncut gems. <laughs> then we was talking about like his big movies. Could he bring in box office? Because he was supposedly or allegedly is going to be making Happy Gilmore too. Oh really? So we were, you know, it's just, it's just, you know. Uh, smart or not for him to do that and I think it would be genius because they just had like a 20 year uh, reunion or anniversary of the film Yeah, and so you have an opportunity to really grow with your fans and give me some nostalgia uh -huh. but also bring in a new audience and so I don't think it's stupid go ahead and do it you can do it right and we're talking about some of his flagship films right Happy Gilmore's flagship film for him you know what movie we left out? We were gone. We're, we, we did Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, Mr. Deeds, uh, something. I can't remember. We're just Water going. Boy? No, we said Lil Nicky. We're just going. All of these. We for, we didn't even say Water Boy until Jeremy brought it up. Really? That's how, that's how, that's how good Adam Sandler well, is. And you're, you're just talking about his past movies, like, way back when he first like his started. flagship movies. Yeah, like, we're not even talking about all the movies that just come out with Jennifer Aniston. Yes. The one that just recently came out. And the, he, don't he do something with the uh, adults with Chris Rock and them? The what? Like he does something with for like four kids, but like a, it's like a like a kid movie. Oh, with I don't Chris know. Rock, Chris Rock seems like daddies. Like like it's like they're like dads. Him, oh. Kevin James. Oh, grown ups. Grown ups. I was yes. like, what? Grown ups. Um, that's he, really funny. Yeah, grown ups, hilarious. And then the he in his bag. The bar mitzvah one. Yes, yes. With his daughters. He's putting his daughters on. Come on, yeah. man. He put everybody on. Yeah. Anybody who wouldn't he put And his on, wife. He, <laughs> it was a family Adam Sandler, film. one of the ones. We have to put, if, if we had a Mount Rushmore film. Adam Sandler. I got to put Adam Sandler, uh, uh, Sandler up there. 100%. We're, that's great. Just to think about it, that's crazy. 100%. Big Daddy. We even say that. Big Daddy. Shout out to the Sprouse bros. That man be making movies. Anyway, let me... Uh, the the key to this is don't be Kevin Hart and don't be Borderlands. <laughs> <laughs> of course, at this part of the show, we are going to transition into our review of the movie that we did watch, which is The Whale. And The Whale is a... You want to read it? Sure. Don't mess up this time. I know. I'm just joking. Go ahead. The Whale is a 2022 American psychological drama filmed... Film directed by Darren Aronofsky and written by Samuel D. Hunter based on his 2012 play of the same name. The film stars Brendan Fraser, Sadie Sink, Love, Hong Chow, Ty Simpkins, and Samantha Morton. The plot follows a reclusive, morbidly obese English teacher who tries to restore his relationship with his teenage daughter, whom he had abandoned eight years earlier. The film was shot from March 8th to April 7th, 2021. In Newburgh, New York, March eighth to April seventh, they shot this movie in a month. 
Yeah, which is crazy because that usually doesn't happen. Well, it's not really c- crazy when you think about they were really they were in, in one, location. one location. Yeah, true. Uh, but it's also very crazy to think that they did it in one location and it was straight drama. So like that's how that's how tough this movie was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's a seven out of seven point six out of ten on IMDb. Okay. So if in fact you want to watch this movie, you don't want it to be spoiled. Uh, come back and watch it yeah. or listen to this episode or watch this episode whenever you have watched it. Uh, if you don't care, we're about to jump into it now. Shout out to the whale, a.k.a. me, when I'm getting out of the pool on the... Oh, my God. You, <laughs> you see me do my beach well, haven't you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the whale, man. Um, okay, let's, let's, let's slide to it. First and foremost, IMDB says 7.6 out of 10. Mm-hmm. We go out of 100, so that's yeah. 76 out of 100. What would you say? And remember, we're using the Corey rating system. CRS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you hmm. need the scores again? Yeah, remind me. Zero to 40, 41 to 65, 66 to 100. 66 to 100. I would give this probably... Honestly, hmm. be honest. You I, you feel like you gotta go low, but you don't want to give it low. No, I don't feel like I have to go low. Like I want to give it a good score because I feel like it. I feel like it was a phenomenal film, and I feel like there were a lot of good messages in it. I just don't know. Just because it's such like a heavy drama, mm-hmm. I don't know the rewatchability of it. Okay, so you're factoring that in. Yeah, but I do think that it was really good, so I would probably give it like a 75. Okay, so you're around that uh, area. I would give this, from a technical standpoint, from it was, like, watching it was a good film. I agree the knocks on it is rewatchability, but that's a knock that maybe you take because not every movie is going to be that. Mm -hmm. So I would hover around like a 79 to an 80. Okay. So, based on our rating system, first off, let's split the difference. We'll say 77. Mm-hmm. Press Next Podcast says the whale is 77, 77. out of 100. So, certified stamp. Boop. It's a good film to watch. Um, but let's talk about some of those things, right? So, what were your initial thoughts after watching it? So, I think at first watching it, I was just kind of like, and I think I even made a comment. I was like, this is kind of gross to watch like while I'm eating because I was eating lunch. Um but I think that it just shows, one, how obesity is a, is a a disease, but food addiction is a disease mm-hmm. and, or not a disease, like it's a an it's actual a, yeah. problem. Mm-hmm. And I think that it just goes to show the cycle, like the psyche behind people and their relationships with food mm-hmm. and how where one thing in your life is suffering, like, everything. You know, just food, just... It was a comfort to him. Right. I relate to that. Um, I relate to, you know, feeling like a parent abandoned you. I relate to a lot of things in this film. Dang, I didn't even think about, like, some of the layers... And and how they how you would connect with it for sure, I knew off top because we both talked about this with each other, like that that I knew that you were gonna relate with food being a comfort and it's so hard to explain to people like what that means and yeah. how that feels and like how genuinely you feel good when you're eating. Yeah, and you feel like crap afterwards. A hundred percent. But while you're eating, it is hard to explain the the bliss you feel eating yeah that sounds so terrible well and i think that one um scene in this is where he opens up the drawer Mm -hmm. and he sees the food and he grabs it and then he's like no like a candy bar yeah and then he was like no i don't need this and so he puts it in the drawer and closes it and then he's sitting there for a little bit longer and he grabs it again. And I think that that just goes to show the struggle of like when you are addicted to food or when food is your comfort, when you have this 
dependency on food. You know, like you in your mind know that that's not what you should be doing. And you know that that's not the healthy route, but like there's something in your brain that just overrides that. And it's like, I know, but I'll make up for it later. Yep. Or I know, but tomorrow will be better. Yep. I know, but tomorrow I won't do this. Yep. You know? Or I worked out this morning. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's Whatever excuse that will get you to feel better about the bad decision that you know you're just about, that you just made. Mm-hmm. Um, and I loved how the episode, the episode, I loved how the movie showed his eating was tied to certain situations or his binging was right. So yeah. like, obviously he was, when you, when you get that big, when we're talking about a guy here who is, he's a huge human. I mean, he's like six, four, like, He's probably any like 600, 700 pounds. Yeah. So if you haven't seen this movie, um, and I didn't really know what it was about going Me into I had it. Zero I, just, idea. I just knew he was big. I just knew that Brendan Fraser had like costume was crazy mm-hmm. because and he won best actor and he won a lot of awards and this film won a lot of awards, but I literally had no idea what it was about. Like I knew it was about this obese man. Like that was the forefront of it. But I thought maybe it was about, like, him losing weight or something like that. I had no idea what it was about. So to set the scene, it is about this English teacher, like I said, and he is very morbidly obese, can't get off the couch without help, has to use a walker because he can't walk around. And, like, not to be insensitive, but if you picture uh, Tammy from Thousand Pound Sisters, like, that's what this man in some of the later seasons that's what this man is like like he can't really do anything himself he has to have his friend come in and help him and um like he he lives a very dependent life without dependence yeah that's a good way to put it and um you learn that he has dealt with a lot he lost his partner Mm-hmm. And so I think that that's another thing is like, it's, there's grief, there's guilt, there's redemption, right? Like that's all an added themes. layer. Yeah, yeah. He basically his story real quick is he was married. He had a daughter. His daughter is played by Sadie Sink, who Phenomenal. I think did an incredible job, she, and should have won awards if she did not. I don't know if she. I think she won like a Critical Choice Award or something. If that's the thing, she, but I don't think she won like a. Any Grammys or anything? It almost makes me feel like um, Django. I think um, Christoph Waltz won all the awards, but I also think that that uh, um, Jimmy Fox. Nope. Leonardo DiCaprio. Leo should have got his first. Yeah. Off of Django for sure. Um, And Sadie, I, I honestly, in Hollywood, this was Brendan's comeback. This was a huge yes. moment. Yes, yes, which was another thing of why this was such a big movie. Yes, it's a huge moment. But we know if you if you have ever been a a, a movie file, you know Brendan. He got chops. He could act. Yeah, we knew that. Like, there's nobody out here who didn't know that that man could play roles. What he did as Charlie, though, was the reason why it was so incredible is because he's buried in his bodysuit that we know he's wearing. I mean, he's a huge male. And he's basically on the couch the entire movie. Mm-hmm. So for him to make you feel, to experience his his grief, his guilt, his anguish, his redemption, you have to be an incredible actor That's true. to do that. That's true. I didn't even think about that. Right? Yeah. The, he's not doing a lot of moving. It's like Will Smith and iRobot. Uh, iRobot, I'm sorry. And uh, I Am Legend. Will Smith is the only person in the movie. Yeah. It's like old buddy in Lost. Tom Hanks, mm-hmm. he's the only, when they give a performance of that level. Not lost. Not lost. I'm sorry. I uh, know what you mean. Damn. Wilson. Yep. Anyway, when they cast give away. a, yes, cast away. When they give a performance of that level, when you're the only person in the film or you're not moving, we're talking about this, this film took place in one apartment. There's no way you're not getting an award. Yeah. If you're that good. And he was that good. And the other part is. I think part of the reason why he was that good is because Sadie w- 
was was yeah. lifting that man there. Sadie did her big one. And time out. Who played the uh the sister in law? She did her big one too. She was incredible too. Yeah, the best friend. Yes. Yeah. So Sadie played Charlie's daughter, and uh and then there was a best friend who was basically what if you watch the movie, you're gonna say this person is enabling Charlie. Mm -hmm. She's a nurse. She knows Charlie. Why does she know Charlie? Because Charlie's uh, partner who passed away is, uh, that's his sister. Uh, they were never really married, so I guess not sister-in-law, but they became best friends. Charlie, because his partner passed away, has gained all of this weight. But he, Charlie left his marriage and his daughter when she was eight years old to be with this, this man that he was really in love with. And then he passed away, then he gets big. So... As he said, it kind of gets out of control. So you're seeing so many layers of him, mm -hmm. right? Like, he just did such a fantastic job, right? Like, I just think he did such a... If, in fact, we could rewatch the movie and it would be like, you know, yeah. cold. Yeah. I might put this up in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I can't because, like, I'm probably never going to watch the movie. I might if I'll I was like... I'll it again. Right. Because there's certain things, even the way he was... The way he would, he was an English teacher and he wanted people to write something real and he would like write essays. He loved essays. And the way that he could take an essay and really dissect what it means in real life was incredible. So, And I feel like I just contradicted myself by saying I would watch it again because I did mention the rewatchability earlier. But I feel like this is a movie that I would put on if I wanted to feel something. Yes. It's not like, oh, I'm scrolling through the... Um, platform and i see it and i'm like oh i haven't watched that in a while let me put that on yeah no no no, no. It, it's like one of those and it will be one of those things where i would be like i want to watch it again for the cinematography yeah and for some of the storytelling because they did so much like for instance throughout the entirety of the movie basically it's just raining outside yeah but at the end where I the tides have turned i was like yeah, dang it's, it's always, always raining. raining right but see that's that's purposeful right yeah you were able to notice that it, it's always raining mm -hmm. outside and in the end, when it's seemingly he's going to die, and, you know, he does, it's sunny. It's so sunny, it's bright. You can't even see the outside anymore. Mm -hmm. And every time the door opens, there's, like, a whoosh of wind. I don't know if you caught that. It was, like, the beach, mm -hmm. right? Like, it was getting closer and closer to the beach, which was, like, his piece. Mm -hmm. um, like, those little things. Incredible. Like, they just did an incredible job. No, but, they did. Uh, how effectively did the film explore the theme of self-destruction? Mm. Um, it was very effective with showing self self destruction because it showed all of these different things. Like the first thing we see is that he is probably having a heart attack, and his best friend is like, "You need to go to the hospital because he has congestive heart failure." He has congestive heart failure. What was his blood pressure was like two forty over one eighty or something like that? Yeah, it was, it was crazy, dumb high, and she was like, "You have con." congestive heart failure like you are going to die within the week if you don't go to the hospital and he was like i'm not going to the hospital i don't have insurance i can't afford it and which is a sad reality for a lot of people but she was like well you know it doesn't matter having what you debt, can afford yeah, <laughs> having, having debt, debt is better, is better, than, better being than, dead. than being dead yeah but um so he refused to go to the hospital he would not get help and um we see him with the food. Like he knew that that's not what he should be doing. But of course, like when you are overcome with depression and grief and all of these different things, it's like, well, why does it matter? Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. like what, this is the least of my worries. I'm going to die anyway. Right. So I might as well die doing the things that I want to do. Right. I also think they explored it for Sadie's character as well. For sure, for sure. Um, one thing that I did like is when Sadie, she hadn't seen her dad in eight years, and she, you know, came over, or it seemingly hadn't seen him in eight years, and she came over and she was looking at an old picture of him, and she was like, so how'd you gain all this weight anyway? Well, her first question was, does this mean I'm going to get fat too? Yeah. That was the first thing she says in the film. But yeah, she was, I didn't you know, even. I didn't even catch that. Yeah, yeah, that was the first thing she said, um... He knew that he was going to die, so he texted her. And apparently, he's not supposed to be connected with her or whatever. So she comes over. She asked that question. 
he's kind of grilling her with questions and then she asked him uh, you know like how'd you gain all the weight like mm-hmm. what happened to this guy da, 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 da. Uh, and you see like the one of the questions I put on here is like what do you think the film was trying to say about relationships and human connection and you can see in his character in all of their characters right of he he would try to tell people and force you to think that like he's disgusting but there's only one person in the film which was the guy who was like which we still don't really figure out who he was or did we and i missed that who was the guy who's supposed to be the the missionary yeah like he ran away from home right but like why is he there you know what i mean yeah i think that he was just there to yeah, I don't know. I don't know why he showed up at So I got to keep, I got to dive a little bit re-watch. further into why he was there. But I just think that, like, he felt a calling towards Charlie. Mm-hmm. The friend feels a calling towards Charlie. Mm-hmm. Even when Charlie's choking on something and she has a slip up and she's like, chew your food like a regular human. You know, you could have died in front of me. She's She's effectively enabling him. But really, she's not enabling him. She's feeding him. Yeah. She's helping him. She's she's literally trying everything that she can do to help this man survive, but Charlie doesn't want it. And then even what we find out at the end when Sadie is leaving and she calls him daddy, Mm -hmm. right? Like that was the moment of like all the BS she was doing as her rageful or vengeful self as a teenager. She still has that connection to him. She still has connection to, to people and to humans and, Mm -hmm. While things can be very tumultuous, they can also be very beautiful. That's how he saw, that's how Charlie saw pretty much everybody, right? There's beauty in everything. Right. It's really hard for you to, to, the only beauty he didn't find was in himself. Right. Which is crazy. I'm having an epiphany right now. He literally found beauty in every single aspect of life. The bird that flew outside on the window that he kept mm-hmm. feeding. Everything, the books, the essays, the class that he's teaching, um, and he just couldn't find the beauty in himself. Crazy, 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 crazy. Very crazy. Okay. But I think that, to answer your question, I think the film shows, you know, the theme of self-destruction in every character. Yeah, that's true. Every single I feel like they all had a film. piece of their own, like, they're playing into their own demise. Mm-hmm. Like, the sister, she felt so much guilt around not being able to save her brother that she felt like it was her responsibility to take care of Charlie. So right. while you say she was enabling him, it was feeding her. That's true. It was like feeding her soul to be so able to take care of someone. Because remember, she tells Thomas, yeah. the missionary, I'm the only one that can take care of him. I'm the Not only true. one that can save him. Right, 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 right. And all he was trying to do too was, yeah, that's crazy. Now that I think about it. And in Sadie's character, she was always... She's always so rude, so vengeful. So she doesn't like. She doesn't want to be loved. She feels like she got thrown away, and she's only supposed to be thrown away. Right. So she forces everybody to try to throw her away. Right. She's gonna do everything she can. But you see that she did a good thing for Thomas. Right. But I don't know if I don't know if it was a good thing. I think it ended up being a good thing. Yeah. Right. Like I think what she did was very. Uh, um, Old, <laughs> bold, somewhat even conniving, and it could have went either way. And be- yeah. and he chose to see it as like, this was a good thing that happened to me. So this is the person that it could have, you know, this is why she did that. Right. Or he could have been like, why would you do that at all? Like, you taking yeah. pictures of me, you doing this, that, and the third. So very interesting. Uh, what was your what what character stood out the most to you? Mm, probably Sadie. I mean, yeah. What was her name? I don't remember her name in the in the movie. Ellie. Is her name Ellie? Ellie, yeah. Ellie is she just she Sadie went crazy in that movie. I'm sorry. She did really very well. Like her um her body language and her pace and her movements was almost even better than her like her dialogue. Yeah. I mean, she was she was going crazy. She was going crazy. Uh what was the what was the moment that was particularly moving or challenging for you? Okay. When she was standing in the doorway and she did call him dad, oh, I yeah, that about took my heart out. Like I almost had a teardrop because even though you see the whole film, the struggle between them, her feeling like she was abandoned by him, him being like, you know, your mother said I couldn't see you. I asked to keep up with you. 
I know all of these things. Like, this is your essay because this is something that your mom sent me. Like, I've been keeping up with you from a distance. And um, she, you know, was just in this teenage angsty rage of you left me. There's nothing you can do to make that Mm -hmm. better. And then when he was like, like, you know, when his life was, when he was at the end of his life and she was like, you have got to fight like to live. You've got to fight to live because I think that even though she was rejecting him the whole time, she finally felt like she had a dad back in her life. Yeah. You know, she, she was playing like she was rejecting him the whole time because right. she kept showing up. Right. So he knew that. He knew that. I'm like, okay, I got like a... First off, you showed up, number one, and then you came back. And then you came so back. You can you can say all the things you want to say. Yeah. He knew, oh, I have this in with her. Mm-hmm. So she can call me whatever she wants to call me. She can post me online. She can do whatever, but she's still going to come back. Right. So I there's, there's something in there that she loves me or I'm connected with her. We have some sort of bond, whatever it may be. Uh, that moment was tough. I really wish in that moment it wasn't as um, avant-garde. Yeah. Right? Like, I really wish. I was okay with the flashback to the bench. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, I said bench. To the beach. Yeah. It was the very end of the movie. He, he stands up, which is a very pivotal part earlier in the movie. She's telling him to stand up. She takes her his walker away. And she's like, stand up, walk over to me. And he can't do it. And then at the end of the movie, when it's very clearly that his heart is failing and he's about to die. And she is about to walk out that door. He stands up on his feet and he walks over to her. It was a very powerful moment. But they made it kind of comic-y. Yeah. Like it was was a little bit too... They put a little bit too much sauce on it. Yeah, because then he like ascended into the heavens and right. was like, okay. Right, well, right. Which was that was a sim- sweet moment. Now I'm just like, what the hell? No, I that part I didn't really mind him ascending. Well, them showing his feet lift off the ground nope. was the crazy part. Yeah. If he would have just kind of like looked up and then like it went white and he's just at the beach or whatever. That would have been fine. Fine. Yeah, I'd have been cool with that. They were a little hefty on the sounds of his feet whenever he was walking. Yeah. Like, they, it was just too... Be fine. Yeah, <laughs> it was just too... They did a little bit too much on the, on the end. But That's fair. it was a very powerful moment. I also... The moment of him just literally eating everything when he, he figured out, like, my life is going to crap, I'm going to die. Like, it was a final, like, the real realization that is over. Yeah. I really like I feel like I have resonated with that to a certain piece of like when it comes to me there's been times before in my life I've struggled with food for forever there's been times where I've lost 80 90 pounds I've gained 120 back like whatever it may be Mm -hmm. up down up down up down and there's been times where like I've been really big where I have like done something like that like something bad has happened in my life or like I'm going through a depression and I will eat an entire pizza. Or I have, not will. It's been a long time I've done that. Like eat till I basically like feel like I'm about to vomit or mm-hmm, something. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to explain why I would even do something like that. But in that moment, it's like the only thing that makes me feel good. Yeah. So I want to like continue to do that. Yeah. And... Yeah, we just got a problem with it. I try to, like, not base my life around food. It, like, I try my best. Oh, we want something. We want to reward something. I try not to, like, let's reward ourselves with food or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's really tough. We grew up in the South, so it is what it is. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay. So, do you think this film successfully conveyed its intended message? I think for sure that it did. I think that um, it makes you feel a lot of things. And maybe, like maybe us having a conversation about how we've struggled with food, maybe that's why we connected with it so well. Maybe Mm -hmm. not everybody is going to connect with it the same way that we did and feel the same emotions that we felt. But I think that for me and I, and I obviously obesity is a problem in our country. So I think that a lot of people will um, resonate with this. So I think that it does get its 
meaning across and not even just like in the aspect of food, but just those relationships and how, um, like feeling like you've messed up so bad that you don't deserve anyone and that you don't deserve anything good or too far from you're too far gone. You're too far gone. So it's like, well, I'll just eat myself to death, (laughs) you know? Right. Um, or do anything to death or do anything to death. Correct. Because too much of anything is too much. I literally say this about like, I don't say this. So this is a vulnerable moment for me, but I agree with you, and I think that if people could maybe, for those who maybe don't struggle with eating, everybody struggles with something. Mm -hmm. If you can step outside of yourself to see a different perspective, I think you can connect with this film. Yeah. Because it may not be food that you struggle with, but it could be something else. But I often think about, you know, my family, there's a lot of things that we struggle with as a family. Um, And one of them being, like, homelessness. Mm -hmm. And I often feel... I often think to myself when I'm like driving, I'm like, man, I wonder if like, I wonder if he feels that he's just too far gone, that he, that his life is unsalvageable, unsal- like salvageable mm-hmm. when it is, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it is like, it's, there's, it doesn't mean that like coming back to what we would call a normal life is going to be easy for you. Right. But it's, you can turn, you still have so much time. So much time. I mean, right. we don't know when we're going to leave. But right, like, of course, of course. If we're thinking out for the years, you have so much time. And, like, it's it's going to be hard, but there are ways to find opportunities to live somewhat of a decent life and still be living. Mm-hmm. Um, I think about that. And for him, that's, like, his thing. Like it's, it's just, like, I'm too far gone, so what does it matter? Yeah. I can't do much now. But it's still, like... You probably could. Maybe if you got into the hospital, they can give you some medication to help with your blood pressure and everything else. And maybe they find a donor and it's able to work. And maybe you get... Well, and talking about this film, that's another thing that we learned is that he had money the whole time. Yeah, but he loved his daughter so much the money was for his daughter. He would not spend any of his money because he wanted it to go to his daughter that he had no relationship with. And so much so that he wouldn't even get the help for himself. Because he was putting her above him. Very selfless, but also very stupid. Very stupid. Very stupid. Right? It translates in the movie, though. But we do that. That's like but, real life. But I, And I also think that him being an English teacher plays a lot into the film. And him trying to tell his students, like, he wouldn't even come off camera. Like, off of, um, he wouldn't even go camera, camera on. on yeah. Because he didn't want people to look at him like he was disgusting so he would tell them you know like my camera's bro right and with all of his essays you know he was like you need to write about this this that and third and then when he realized that his life was in ending he was like i just want you to write something with meaning something something with feeling something true something real and then people were vulnerable and he was like this is what it's about he was chasing the high he felt when he read his daughter's eighth grade essay. About Moby Dick, which is why this is The Whale. The Whale, yes, because it was about the author's obsession with this whale that he can never catch. And you almost feel bad for him because he's he has this basically an unrequited love mm-hmm. or obsession, whatever you may you want to call it. So in the end, I know that we're like kind of, we could continue to deep dive. Go ahead. What were you about to say? Go ahead. I want to. I want to read. Read the. Oh my God! It was incredible. I wish. I want. I hope they have it online. But like, these are the type of films that like I really. When it comes to telling a story, these are the type of films that that keep me going as a like aspiring filmmaker. Is can I can I tell a story in a way that a lot of other people can connect with it and and see themselves in it or see somebody else in it. And like, of course, the action movies and stuff like that; those are all cool. I'm not don't don't get it out the way. Don't don't get it twisted for that. Those mm-hmm. are all cool. I think there's place, time and place for those. But these these be the ones that win the awards, and you look and you say, "Who who watched this movie? We did." <laughs> and it's it's incredible. 
if you want to feel something, if you want to watch something, if you want to connect with something, I, The Whale is one of the movies that will that will get that fixed for you. You, mm-hmm. you got to pull it up? I do. Did you know this was an A24 film? It was A24 production. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or distribution. Um. Okay. This is what the essay that he refers to several times because he's like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. And I think that it resonated with him, and I think that it may – resonate resonate with others um it says in the course of the book talking about Moby Dick the pirate Ahab Mm -hmm. encounters many hardships his entire life is set around trying to kill a certain well I think this is sad because this well doesn't have any emotions and doesn't know how bad Ahab wants to kill him he's just a poor big animal and I feel bad for Ahab as well because he thinks that his life will be better if he can kill this well but in reality it won't help him at all I was very saddened by the book, and I felt many emotions for the character. And I felt saddest of all when I read the boring chapters that were only descriptions of the whale, because I knew that the author was trying to save us from his own sad story, just for a little bo- just for a little while. This book made me think about my own life, and then it made me feel glad for my. And then that's all we got. Yeah, I want to say like. It's just a very deep essay. Yeah. And a very deep take on how to view certain things. We we sometimes focus and hyper focus on like slaying some sort of large dragon in life. Right. The dragon is not even worried about us. It doesn't even know that it, we exist. And the reality is once we slay it, we'll figure out that there's more to life than slaying a dragon. Right. That's what I take from that poem. And I take we're always chasing something that doesn't matter no that it's just a distraction from who we are whether it's we're chasing status or we're chasing um, monetary value or we're chasing to be um like understood or we're chasing to be validated by other people and those are the things that are distracting from our own life or that those are the things that are trying to save us from our own sad story, Mm, (laughs) you know, for sure. Very demure, very mindful, very mindful. Anyway, thank y'all for sticking around listening to this episode. I really enjoyed the well. I hope you do too. Like I said, yeah, I hope you do too. And I, I don't think that it's so, sad like we kind of took away the yeah, sad we did. Part. Yeah, yeah it's really not sad it's just a deep film and mm-hmm. i think that you are going to get a lot out of it so Powerful. highly recommend indeed and uh let us know what you think if you do watch it or if you have watched it let us know what you think and let us know if you agree or if you would like to add to the discussion in any way but as always if you're watching tv and ask you still watching press next bye bye